Hi there, I'm Shane, and in this video I'm going to be talking all about camera sensors and the differences between lens mounts from manufacturer to manufacturer and what crop factor means. And ultimately by the end of this video I hope to be able to help you decide on what the right lens might be for your camera or what the right camera to buy is depending on its sensor size, whether that be full frame, APS-C, or micro four thirds. So this video is going to be all about digital camera sensors and how they interact with different lenses depending on their lens mount and their size. This video is also part of a series and in other previous videos in the series I talk about the basics of camera operation, lenses, and just basically a lot more of the fundamentals of photography. So if you're interested in watching those videos, please feel free to hit the playlist on screen now or found in this video's description. However, let's get on to the topic of this video. Fundamentally, the main idea I'm going to cover in this video is the term crop factor. And in concept, it's rather simple. And that is that different lenses interact with different cameras based on the sensor size that they have. However, in practice, it gets rather complicated because different manufacturers have different lens mounts in different sensor sizes can really influence the price of a camera and the price of the lenses for that camera and sometimes it can influence the performance of the camera. So it can often be rather daunting to consider the topic. However, I hope to cover it thoroughly in this video. So I'm gonna start off with talking about camera sensor sizes and I'm gonna focus on the big three currently on the market. That is full frame APS-C in micro four thirds cameras. There are other options out there like medium format, one inch sensors, and even the cameras found on your phones. However, I'm gonna talk about the most popular ones for DSLR and mirrorless cameras, which are these three. For many years now, full frame cameras or 35 millimeter sensors have been the most popular option among professional photographers. However, in the past couple of decades, since digital photography has become absolutely dominant on the market, micro four thirds in APS-C sensor cameras have become increasingly popular among casual photographers, enthusiasts, and even professionals because their smaller sensor sizes allow for more compact bodies as well as lower costs. However, it doesn't mean that they're worse in any sort of way and especially as technology has gotten better and better, their performance has become almost on par with full frame cameras. So naturally, the next question is going to be, what is the best sensor size? And the question is rather complicated. The easy answer is going to be the best sensor size is the one that you have, and it's going to be the best for your means because it's what you can use. However, the real answer is a lot more complicated. In general, though, full frame cameras are often associated with better image quality. This is because of their larger sensor size, allowing for lower pixel density, meaning you can have higher resolutions and have better low light performance at the same time. However, with this, they need larger lenses, which means they're significantly heavier and significantly more expensive to manufacture. Whereas APS-C size sensors can be much more compact with comparable performance and at a significantly lower cost. And the smaller sensor sizes mean you can have certain features that larger sensors just can't do yet, especially with regards to computational photography and things like having lower rolling shutter so that you can have better video performance and you can circumnavigate a lot of the issues that you come with having a smaller sensor by using things like speed boosters and adapters to get the same amount of light onto that smaller sensor size. So really what it comes down to isn't what the right sensor size is or what the best one is. It's more what your budget is and what kind of look you're going for. Because full frame cameras are often gonna be able to get more shallow depth of field images just by default because their larger sensor allows often for faster lenses to be made for them. However, having the smaller body might be very beneficial for you as well. Or you might be looking for certain video features that full frame cameras just don't have yet. Often lenses will be referred to based on their full frame equivalency. And what this means is how the lens will look if it were to be on a full frame camera because it's the most popular professional option. And people will often refer to micro four thirds and APS-C cameras as crop sensor cameras because their sensors are physically smaller. 
An APS-C sensor camera has a crop factor often of 1.5, meaning if I use the same 50 millimeter lens on a full frame camera on an APS-C camera, it will look more like a 75 millimeter lens because of the 1.5 times crop factor. However, if I'm using a micro four thirds camera, it has a crop factor of two, which simply means if I use the same 50 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, on a micro four thirds camera, it will appear to be a hundred millimeter lens, which is significantly more cropped in. So it's for this reason, people often refer to lenses by their full frame equivalency. And it's okay to be confused at the start. It's a rather complicated topic. And the biggest thing to keep in mind is as you get more comfortable with your camera or with different focal lengths, just understand that when you're using the same lens on crop sensor cameras, they'll just be punched in a little bit more and you'll need often a wider focal length to get an equivalent look of a full frame. So just when you thought this video couldn't get any more exciting, it's time to talk about lens mounts. And thankfully the concept is actually rather simple. And that is that every lens has a mount on the back of it, making it compatible with certain cameras with a matching mount. And it's as simple as that. For instance, if I were to use a Canon EF lens, it will not be compatible with the Sony FE camera. And it's like having the wrong key for a certain lock. It has to be the right key. However, it gets a little bit more complicated off the bat because every manufacturer doesn't actually use the same mount on all their cameras. For instance, when Canon made their new mirrorless cameras, they came out with their RF mount, which requires an adapter if you'd like to use Canon EF lenses on their RF mount. And not all lenses can be adapted to every camera. For instance, I can adapt Canon EF lenses to Sony FE with an adapter. However, I can't adapt Canon RF yet to Sony E with an adapter. So it is not always very consistent and you have to actually do a bit of research when you're looking if certain lenses can be adapted. However, it also can get more complicated because certain camera manufacturers like Sony are annoying and their lenses might work on certain cameras. However, just because the mount is the same, it doesn't mean the lens is gonna be the right lens for that camera. For instance, a Sony E-mount lens will work on their Sony uh, E-mount cameras, as well as their Sony FE lenses will work on a Sony E-mount camera. And you won't actually notice too much besides the massive size of the lens. However, if I were to take a Sony E-mount lens and put it on an FE camera, it's going to actually look rather goofy because there's not enough glass inside this lens to cover the sensor size. So it's going to have an actual vignette around the edge of the image. So you'll still be able to use it per se. However, it's not going to utilize the full size of the sensor unless it's actually designed to be a full frame lens not an APS-C lens, and they don't really play nice together. Whereas other brands like Canon and Nikon have separate mounts for their APS-C cameras. And right now Canon has three separate mounts for all their cameras. So it's kind of a pro con situation. And at the end of the day, just make sure you have the right mount. And this is especially important when you're considering third-party lenses like ones from Zeiss, Laowa, Rokinon, Tamron, or Sigma, because they often will make the same lens, but change the mount on the back of it. So it's compatible with multiple camera systems. So even though the lens is the same physically, the mount on the back of it is different. So you wanna make sure you pick the right lens for your camera. I want to circle back quickly on the topic of adapters because I did mention you can adapt older lenses to newer cameras. However, it's a rather complicated topic because not all lenses will be able to be adapted to all cameras. However, using an adapter can provide some meaningful opportunity to add features to your camera besides just being able to use vintage and cheaper lenses that add a lot of character to your image. And there are certain adapters like this one, which is called a speed booster, which can take a full frame Canon lenses and put them down to a micro four thirds sensor size, meaning you can get a greater amount of light onto a smaller sensor size. You can get 
a lot more performance in low light situations and shallower depth of fields without compromising on any of the features that are offered by this micro four thirds sensor. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. However, often when you are adapting lenses, it comes with a compromise, such as lower image quality if it's an older lens that doesn't have necessarily the best coatings and often heavily compromised weather sealing because you're adding an additional point of failure for dust and moisture to enter your camera, as well as lower autofocus performance, which is often a big kicker for a lot of photography and even modern video because Often the autofocus is actually pretty rubbish on these older lenses and they just can't keep up with modern systems, especially when you're adding a new variable into the situation. So my recommendation is that while you're getting started to steer clear of adapting lenses. Of course, I don't mean that if you're going from one camera system to another, adapting isn't an absolutely great option to go for. All I mean is that if you're starting from fresh, you should consider native lenses first because it's gonna be something that you'll really appreciate down the road. And it's only unless you have existing lenses that you want to adapt, or you're really looking for the unique features that an adapter provides, you should consider it. Otherwise, just look at native lenses and consider the lenses that are built for your camera. So now that we covered all those topics, I hope you feel a little bit better equipped when shopping for a new camera or a new lens. And if you want any advice on what focal length to choose, I made a whole nother video on the topic and I hope you might find it a little bit helpful, especially now that you have a better understanding of what the term crop factor means. Anyways, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. I try and answer all of them. And if I missed anything or if you have any clarification or insight on a topic that I talked about, please feel free to let me know. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did so, maybe consider liking it and subscribing to my channel. It goes a really long way in helping me make more videos like this. And as always, I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next video.